So the first question says, um, so let me just write question one there. Uh, there we go. And a, um, and then the first question says use the formula minus B plus or minus uh, the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A, uh, the quadratic formula basically, to solve for X, correct to two decimal places. If um, 3x squared uh, minus 5x equals to 3. As soon as uh, you're given the quadratic formula or the equation states that uh, you shall solve x to two correct decimal places, uh, you should know that uh, there's no way you're going to be able to factorize that question. You have to use uh, the tri the quadratic formula. So for you, for you to use the quadratic formula, uh, you need a equation to be in the standard format uh, a x squared uh, plus b x uh, plus c uh, equals to zero. Then after you have written uh, your equation in this format, that's when you can use the quadratic formula. But then before you do that, uh, you cannot. So to write uh, this equation we have in the standard format, we're going to get uh, 3x squared um, b in this instance is minus 5 so we're going to have minus 5x and then c is going to be minus 3 we take in minus 3 from the right hand side and we take it to the left hand side and then the sign changes it equals to zero as soon as you get to this step you have it in the standard format then you know that your a is equals to 3 your b is equals to minus 5 your c is equals to minus 3 so Solving this problem, then using the quadratic formula become uh, straightforward. So we're going to have um, x equals to uh, minus b uh, plus uh, the square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac uh, divided by 2a. Or our x can be minus b uh, minus uh, the square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac uh, divided by 2a. Uh, now what we left with is just uh, substituting uh, our value for a, uh, b, and c. So if I go ahead and do that again, um, x equals to uh, minus minus b, uh, minus minus 5, that's just going to be plus 5, right? Uh, plus uh, b squared, uh, that's minus, minus 5 squared, so we're going to get minus 5 squared there. And then minus 4, a is 3. Uh, and then c is also uh, c is actually minus 3 so we're going to have minus 3 there and then we divide everything by 2a a is 3 we've already established that or oh, our x can be equals to uh, minus uh, we know that this is going to be plus 5 and then minus um, now we just copying what we've already written on the left hand side that is uh, minus 5 squared uh, minus 4 uh, multiply by 3, multiply by minus 3, uh, divided by 2, multiply by a, a of which is uh, minus 3. So from here, um, just to save time, let me not uh, try and simplify it before I put it in the calculator and just go ahead and plug it in. So we have uh, b uh, plus uh, the square root of uh, minus uh, of b squared minus 4 a is 3, uh, a is 3, a is minus, minus 4, a is 3, um, c is minus 3, uh, divided by 2a, um, a is 3, again. So, um, here what I'm getting, I'm getting that uh, x is equals to 2.14. And then uh, the other possible value of x I'm getting, and uh, now I just have to put the minus in place of the plus. I'm getting a uh, minus uh, 0 0.468. And that's how uh, we solve uh, this problem. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and move forward. Uh, the second question, two, um, it's a follow-up question to A. It's saying, uh, and solve for X if uh, 3X squared uh, minus 5X uh, minus 3 uh, is greater than 0. Um, 
So there's two possible solutions when you have an inequality like this. We already know the points that are governing the inequality. The points that are governing the inequality is minus uh, 0.468 and uh, 2.14. So let's say, for instance, we're proposing that uh, the value of x should be between these two numbers, right? I'm not saying that 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 is the answer. That's what we are proposing. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we take a number uh, between minus zero four, minus zero point four six eight, and two point one four, and then we put it into the equation. If we put it in the equation, and then uh, our result is a negative number. A negative number that will mean that uh, this expression is greater than zero and then that will mean that uh, what we are proposing here is true that is the answer but then if we take a number between uh, these two values and then um, we get a negative value uh, then that means that it's not right so uh, the inequality will be like x is supposed to be uh, less than 0 0.468 or x is greater than 2.14 so uh, the number i'm going to take uh, i have to take a number that is between 2.14 and minus 0 0.468 i'm going to take one right you can take any number as long as it is between uh, those two points so let me go ahead and do that so i'm going to have three multiplied by one squared uh, minus five multiplied by one minus three uh, that gives me that gives me a uh, minus five if i put minus one here i get minus five and then minus one it is not greater than zero right so that means uh, this equality we were proposing here doesn't work so the alternative inequality is this one that i have in the bottom so this is the answer for the question if we got a number that was greater than zero then we're going to take uh, this inequality here because this inequality uh, is the one uh, that is supposed to the inequality we're supposed to choose is supposed to satisfy uh, this equation we have here and if this is the case what we have for the first option then it doesn't satisfy it okay i hope you understood that uh, if you didn't understand that uh, it's an easy way to solve inequalities uh, but then you have to really like understand what's going on. So maybe take the video back and listen to me do it again. Maybe do another example problem and see what happens. Uh, so let's move ahead. Uh, B. Uh, B says uh, solve for x and y if uh, 2y equals to 24x. Uh, oh no, that's wrong. 2y minus 24x equals to 0 or y equals to x squared uh, plus 5x so between these two equations uh equation one and equation two equation two is linear um because there's nothing being squared it's easier to deal with equation one than to deal with equation two because on equation two we have um x uh, we have x squared uh so the plan is to make uh, y the subject of the formula on equation one or make x but then in this instance i'm going to choose to make y the subject of the formula uh, because if i make x then i'm going to have a fraction when i divide 2 by 24 right so that will mean that uh, from equation one uh, i'm going to i'm going to get uh, 2y equals to uh, 24x and then i divide both sides by 2 i get y equals to 12x and then um, I can see this is equation 3 and then uh, now that I have equation 3 I can substitute it into uh, equation 2 and then I'll be having only x and then I can solve for, for x and then after that I can go back and solve for y so equation 3 uh, into equation 2 uh, so in place of y we get 12x equals to x squared uh, plus 5x and then um, if I write integer in the standard format I get x squared um, x squared then uh, I'm taking 12 to the other side that will be plus 17x uh, equals to 0 
right so x is a common factor uh, so i get x um actually i just realized that i made a mistake there yeah so this is actually going to be x squared and then we have 5 uh, minus 12 so that is going to be minus 7 uh, equals to 0 right and then minus 7 x equals to 0 then i can take x as a common factor so it will be x and then we have x minus 7 equals to 0 so x equals to 0 or x equals to 7 if x equals to 0 then what is y what is y if x equals to 0 then y will be uh, y will be equals to 12x 12 is 0 so this is 0 so y is just 0 uh, but then if y is equals to uh, 12x and x is equals to 7 i uh, will get y equals to 12 uh, in place of uh, 7 in place of x uh, we're going to put 7 so that is 12 uh, multiplied by 7 uh, which is 84 right uh, so that's how we solve this uh, simultaneous equation uh, it's quite straightforward and not really that demanding uh, so let's move ahead um, uh, c uh, c says solve for x if uh, c if 6 <laughs> plus the square root of x plus 7 equals to x plus 1 so it's very difficult to deal with the square root so to get this to get rid of this square root i'm going to square both sides right uh, but then before i square both sides uh, it's better if i take six so that i don't uh actually it's actually the same if i square six because even if i take it to the right hand side uh, i'm going to square it at the end because if i'm squaring one side then i have to square both sides to maintain the equality so we're gonna have um x plus 7 equals to x minus 5 1 minus 6 right i'm um, substituting 6 from both sides and then if i square this i get uh, x plus 7 equals to x multiplied by x is x squared and then x multiplied by minus 5 is minus 5x multiplied by 2 that's minus uh, 10x and then minus 5 multiplied by minus 5 and uh, that is uh, plus 25 right and then now i have to write it in standard format and then uh, i factorize it so that will give me um uh, zero uh, equals to x squared uh, minus 11 x uh, 25 minus 7 that is uh plus 18 and then now it's just a matter of factorizing which factors of 18 do you add and they give you uh, minus 11 you multiply and they give you 18 uh, that is minus 9 and minus 2 so we're going to have uh, 0 equals to x uh, minus 9 multiplied by x uh, minus 2 and then that will say that uh, x minus 9 uh, equals to 0 or x uh, minus 2 equals to 0 x equals to 9 or as x equals to 2 and uh, when you've reached this step if you wanna you know sort of <laughs> bulletproof your answer in a way you can take this uh, this x equals to 9 and substitute it back here and see if you get the same thing uh you can do the same for x equals to 2 you substitute it back into the equation and you see if you get the same thing if you don't get the same thing from both hand sides then you've done something wrong so you have to redo it again uh, let's move ahead uh, d uh, D says if uh, the first three terms of a geometric series are uh, 2 plus 6 uh, plus 18 then what is the value of n if n uh, oh if sn <laughs> what's the value of n if um, sn equals to uh, and seventy seven thousand uh, one hundred and uh, 46 okay so let's check uh so we can we already told that this is a geometric uh, series right uh if we want to calculate the sum of a geometric series uh, we cannot do that uh, before we determine uh, we determine uh, what do we call this again uh, the ratio right uh, so the ratio is given by uh, t3 divided by t2 equals to um, t2 uh, divided by t1 uh, basically we're just saying that uh t uh, n plus one divided by t n yeah 
That's what we basically say. So T3 is 18, T2 is 6. It's supposed to be equal to T2 divided by T1. This is 3, this is 3. So yeah, there we have it. We know that um, our R uh, is equals to 3, right? And then the formula for the sum of uh, this kind of geometric series that is uh, diverting, uh, I think, <laughs> I don't know whether it's converging or, uh, or, or, or diverting. Um, I'll have to look it up, check on the description, I'll plug it in the description whether if R is uh it's not a fracking it's diverting or converging but then i think it's diverting because it keeps on going up so yeah uh so we're going to have sn equals to a uh, multiplied by rn minus one uh, divided by r minus one we know what sn is it is given to us that is one seven seven uh one four six uh, equals to the value of a a is the first term of the sequence that is two R we know that is 3 to the n, uh, which is our variable of interest divided by 3 minus 1. Uh, this is equals to 177, 146, uh, equals to 2 multiplied by 3 n minus 1, uh, divided by 3 of 3 minus 1. That is just going to give us 2. So there's a 2 here, there's a 2 here, cancel it out. So we have 177, 146 equals to 3 n minus 1. Uh, we add one to both sides, we get 177147 equals to 3 to the n. So now we do, what we're supposed to do here is to write 177147 uh, with a base of 3, right? Uh, to the power something. So let me just write to the power 3n. So what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to just use trial and error and see which number I put here uh, gives me... 177147. So if I put 3, I get 27. If I put 4, I get 81. So it seems like these small numbers were still very low. If I put 8, I get uh, 6,000 and something. If I put 9, I get 19,000. If I put 10, I get 59,000. And then if I put 11, I get um, 177147. So that means that um, 3 to the 11 equals to 3 to the n. Uh, so n equals to 11, right? I uh, just use trial and error there. I'm sure there's a method of doing it. Um, you can drop it in the comment section, let other people know. But I just <laughs> did it the first way I could think of. Uh, thank you for watching.